Hey guys, welcome back to Lady Poe Designs. I'm so happy y'all are back. I hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've got a couple projects that I want to show y'all. These are the trinket boxes that I made my nieces for Christmas. I got both of these from my husband actually. He got them at work and they were going to throw these away. So I'm going to strip all the hardware off of these and sand them both down. This one kind of looks like a chest. It has a little clasp closure. So I'm going to take all the hardware off. And this one was actually a tea box. It even had like all the tea listed. But they were perfectly good boxes. They were just going to throw them away. So I'm going to take the tea box after I've sanded it all down completely and gotten all the paper off. I'm going to cover it with the clear salvation solution just to lock in any kind of tannins that are in this wood because I don't know what kind of wood it is. And then we're going to take some salt wash and some fancy farm girl from DIY. And I'm going to put a coat just on the outside of this box. I just want um, just the outside to be green because I'm going to do kind of a little bit of an effect on the front of it. And I'm going to decoupage a, a picture that I downloaded off of Google onto it. And then on the inside, I'm going to take black velvet from DIY and do a couple of coats on the inside just to get good coverage and cover up all that real light wood. It wasn't really, um, like you couldn't really see the grain of the wood, so I wasn't worried about covering it up. Plus, you know, she's 10. She doesn't worry. She doesn't really care about wood. She wants it to be pretty. I'm going to cover everything with Big Top because I want this to be durable for her. I don't know what she's going to be taking in and out of it, so I don't want it to be scratched up and everything. So you've got a seal DIY paint, so I'm going to seal it with Big Top. <clears throat> this is the picture that I found on Google. I just thought it was really pretty, colorful. She's really into wolves right now. So I'm just going to take my water pen and I printed this on rice paper. I just had a plain rice paper. So I'm going to mix the green and the black and kind of make like a circle in the middle. Um, I just wanted to give the front some kind of interest. So I'm kind of ombreing like a circle to more or less frame the, the wolf. Um, and then I'm going to bring the green back in on the corners. So we're going to put some molds on here with the decoupage. So I'm going to blend those edges in. I'm just going over where I might have gotten black on the sides. And then just with the fancy farm girl, I'm just kind of dry brushing it just to make sure everything just kind of flows. So we're going to take the feathers mold by IOD and we're going to try something different. I've never done this before, but I've seen other creators do it. Um, I'm going to paint the feathers, the actual mold itself, with mica powder. And this is a set that I got off of Amazon. It's a really good set. It's got a lot of pretty colors. Very good variety. And for the amount that you pay for it, it's very good value. Um, but I just take a little artist brush and I want to kind of make each feather maybe different grades of color. Look how pretty that is. So that one, I'm going to speed it up. That one's going to be like a green, all greens. This one's going to be all blues, just different shades. This one's going to be all purples. And then the other one are going to be like pinks and reds. And then I did a couple of the peacock feathers. I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not. But I wanted to see how they looked with the mica powders. <laughs> but I like to experiment with new stuff. Aren't those cool? They're so pretty. And they even come with this little spoon. So you can mix it with paint or whatever. So this stuff, it's called eye candy. I got it off of Amazon. And I'm going to tint my resin with it. 
I'm using the same resin that I use the Fabri-Tec or the Fabricast, excuse me, resin. I'll have it down in the description below. Um, but I just mix it into the A part and and it sets up. I may not have put very much because it looks like it turns out gray, but once you put a, a sealer on it, um, it does darken back up a little bit. But I think I may need to put a little bit more. But look how cool that is. But y'all, these mica powders, oh my gosh. See, it leaves nothing in the mold, but look at that. And it does not come off like it's in there. How pretty is that? I, I couldn't, I was blown away. I could not believe how pretty these feathers came out. I think this is the blue one. Oh no, purple. Look how pretty. So I, yeah, I'm going to take all of these out of the molds and see it doesn't leave anything in the mold. So that's no cleanup. But all of those mica powders stay in that resin. I thought it was really cool. So I made quite a few of those, as you can tell. And I just kind of mixed up the colors. I just did what I thought looked good with each other, with one another. Um, there's a red one. That one turned out really cool. But we're going to put our wolf on the front of the box. And I'm going to use um, liquid patina, of course, from DIY. All of the DIY products, salt wash, any of that, and the molds I get from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. As always, I'll have her information in below in the description. So I'm trying to get this as absorbed as possible because you know rice paper is a little bit thicker than decoupage paper so you have to use a little bit more of the liquid patina so I was trying really hard not to get any wrinkles because I didn't want to spray it because that paint isn't sealed on the front so I didn't want any of that to, to smear so I get all of that down and then I just go ahead and do one layer of the liquid patina over the entire front of the box just so I lock in that paint and I don't have to worry about any of that moving while I'm working on it. So I'm going to take um, Little Black Dress and Fancy Farm Girl because those are the two colors I used and I'm going to blend the edges of this wolf into the, the wood because I don't want to see that white. You know, you want it to look like the picture is actually in the wood. So I'm going to work my way around going back and forth. I'm going to speed this up. And I, th I was going to try to keep those little dots of the little feathers up the top, but I just couldn't. It was so hard to go around those. <laughs> but I'm going to go around. Wherever I see white, basically, I'm just going to um, just... Put a little green, put a little black, just kind of camouflage it so you don't see the edge of that paper. So I think that I've got it pretty good, pretty well camouflaged. So I'm going to seal that in with more liquid patina because I want it to have, you know, the same hue as the rest of the front of the box. So I'm going to completely cover that and seal it all in. So now we're going to go in with the Victoria IOD mold and I'm going to spell out her name, which is Scout. So we're going to put the cornstarch down, make sure it'll come out easy. And I'm going to use my favorite creative paper clay. I'll have all of this stuff down in the description block box. So we're just going to work the clay into all the letters of her name and the IOD molds have that micro rim so you just with your thumb just press out the excess clay 
and make the back flat. And you're going to flip it over. And I kind of roll the mold so they just kind of pop out. But we're going to get all these letters out. I love this mold. It's It looks like a vine. I thought it would look really cool with the wolf. So I'm going to take black velvet and just coat the clay with that. That's why I use the silicone cups, y'all. Look at that. That was that old black paint that was in that little cup from the day before when I painted the box. And I just flex it and it all comes out. And I'm using the same color so I don't rinse it out. So I'm going to go in and just put one good coat on the letters. Let those dry a little bit. Not completely, they're still pliable. But I'm going to bring in a ruler to see where I want to place them and set my letters down. Try not to break them. <laughs> and then look at all this alchemy wax I have, y'all. I, <laughs> I need to find some uses for it. If y'all have any ideas, let me know. But I picked Mint Sparkle to go over the letters. And then I'm going to use Jolie's Gilding Wax. It's in copper. I got this a long time ago, and I thought it would look really pretty on the feathers. So I put some over the feathers. And then I'm going to use this Mint Sparkle of the Alchemy Wax. And I'm going to coat all of the letters so it gives it like a green mystical color so it'll match the box they're really pretty i think i show you yeah not pretty it's almost like a pearlescent but i get all those painted and i'm going to take my star bond quick and thick and get these laid down in my super technical way of spacing with a <laughs> popsicle stick and I'm going to lay these down. I get all of these laid down and then I'm going to glue down all of the feathers with the same glue. And then put the hardware stuff back on. Look at this cool thing my husband got y'all. It's You kind of pop the top off and then press the little arrow thing. And it's got all these attachments, and it's a little micro screwdriver. How cool is that? So I'm going to put all the hardware back in. And I ended up putting a couple of magnets on the corners. So I'm going to put feathers. You can see the magnets right there. I didn't show that. So I'm going to put feathers to kind of cover up a little space. And then go over the lettering with that Jolie's Copper Gilding Wax. Just to kind of make all the little details pop. And then put some down on the feathers some more because I guess I thought they needed more. <laughs> and then I'm going to go around the actual box itself and kind of highlight the corners. just to bring that into the just the plain paint and I take a small artist brush and I actually brush some into his eye and on the tip of his nose so now I'm gonna put this is the insert that was inside I'm just gonna slip that back in and I'm gonna take that same Jolie's copper gilding wax I'm just gonna highlight like the edges of the wood because this was kind of raw wood. I sanded it as much as I could. Um, but you know, when she opens it, I just wanted it to be, you know, not just plain black, but I wanted it to be pretty. So I went around the edges with that. But I think it turned out really cool. I love the feathers. And that mica powder was so cool to work with. Y'all have got to try that if you have a chance. But tell me what y'all think in the comments.
So now for the second box, the one that looks kind of like a chest, I sanded all of that real dark wood down and got it down to the real wood. I'm going to take weathered wood, and this had that, you know, fake velvet lining in the middle of it. And I didn't want to strip that out because I didn't actually know what it looked like underneath. So I was wondering if I could paint it, and you can. So I painted all that with the weathered wood. I was going to show you all. I took the salt wash, and I had this little sugar thing that I don't use anymore that had like a little plastic spoon. And I put it in there so it's easier to <laughs> get out because I bought the big old jug of it. But anyway, I'm going to mix that with some of the weathered wood and go around the, the edges. And we're going to go in with Sandy Blonde. I'm going to use my favorite brush, the Perfectionist. And I'm going to put two coats on the outside and on the edges of the top and the bottom. I love this brush. I'm going to go around the edges and make sure all of that wood is covered up. So now I'm going to go in with some Roy Cycle paper. This is actually one of their one of her Halloween blocks, project blocks. But this is what my niece is into. She's kind of into the grunge. And she saw this paper and picked it out a long time ago. I'm going to decoupage this down with liquid patina. I'm going to lay down my starter strip, spritz the paper. I'm sorry I'm out of frame, but I'm just going to keep going up the top of the box, laying down the paper, and trying to get as many wrinkles as I can out of it. So then after it's dried, I'm going to go around, and I lost my zip sander, y'all, so I'm having to use like a nail file. But in a downward motion, I'm going to sand off the rest of that paper. And then I'm going to take just a block sander and just rough it up a little bit. Kind of make it dirty. And then just using plain clear wax, I'm just going to seal all of the DIY paint on the inside and on the sides. So these are the two strips on the bottom. And I didn't really match up the pattern, but it still looks cohesive. Um, I'm going to sand the excess that, of that off. Then on the other side, I'm just going to repeat the process, lay down my starter strip. And I'm not spritzing this because it's not a very big piece. So I'm just going to work my way down. Make sure I get it as flat as I can. And go all the way across. I love this paper. It's so pretty. Sand that off. And the edge is perfect. So I'm going to take the lock and key mold from IOD. And I'm going to make a couple of locks and a couple of keys. Just wanted something as accents on the sides of the box. Because it just looks kind of plain to me. So I'm going to take the same, the same creative paper clay that I like and push it in some of these molds and two of the keys. First, I'm going to lay down a coat of the weathered wood just to cover that color. And then I'm going to go in with Dixie Bell's iron paint, iron patina paint. I've never used it, like I said, but I was very interested. So this is the iron one. They have a copper, and there's another one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But you put down one coat and let it completely dry. And then on the second coat, I'm going to go in with the green spray. And it's going to rust these out. They don't look like it right now because it takes time. But I'm going to use that same um, Starbond Quick and Thick and lay one of the keys on the side and one of the locks on the side. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to lay that long one 
and then put the other key on the front. I'm going to put the hardware back on. And I didn't show it, but I do actually add a couple of lion's feet to the bottom of it. But look how cool this turned out. I really get a good shot of the rust that came out of this paint. I was really impressed with it. I like it a lot. I think I'm going to be using it on more projects. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which one was your favorite? And if y'all have any other techniques that y'all'd like me to try, let me know. But remember to like, comment, share, hit that subscribe button, and as always, you are beautiful and you can do hard things. Bye guys.